Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Plow and Pantry. Today I am making some mixes. I just came from my basement where I just got a basket full of herbs and spices, some of them homegrown, some of them store bought. I find it easier to make a day where I make several of my mixes at once because a lot of them will use the same ingredients. And so it's nice to just get them all out, get all the measuring things out, make them, jar them, and you're ready to go for a while. So, going to be making four mixes today. I really like to make my own mixes because they are, you know what goes in them. You don't have to worry about anti-caking agents and things like that, especially the stuff that you grow that you put in them. I do have some store-bought things that probably have some of those things that aren't required to be listed on the ingredients, but we're doing the best we can. I'm going to grab some bowls to mix things in. Let's see, I need four. I'm just going to grab these four. Today I am doing chili powder, which the first time I ever made chili powder, like four years ago, I didn't realize before I made it that chili powder is actually a mix of chili and spices, that it's not just, I always just assumed it was like a chili that was powdered. Um, and you can use like ground ancho powder, stuff like that. But chili powder that you typically buy in a spice section is actually a mix of spices. So. I'm going to start with chili powder. I'm going to use the chili powder in my taco seasoning, and I'm also making a dry onion soup mix and my ranch mix. So I am getting, these are the things I brought from downstairs, but I think I'm still going to need a few things from up here in this cabinet. Let me get all of this. I will link... Sorry if you can hear my dryer singing. Um, I will link my recipes below. You might have a teaspoon. Um, my ranch seasoning is already on my blog. My blog is dailyration.net. That's been there for a long time. Um, I'm trying to think about how to do the others. I'm probably going to have to make separate posts for each to have a printable recipe. But what I will do, because I am making um, large batches of them today, um, I will have to put like a, you can't really do that in the recipe cards with the, the way the electronics work. So um, I will have to put like a photo in each blog post where I can show you like for one serving, like if you want to replace one onion soup envelope or one taco seasoning envelope versus the big batch, which for me, when I do a big batch, I do a five times, except for my ranch. My ranch, I do like a quart jar because I go through that pretty quickly. Um, let's see, I need a half teaspoon measure. Actually, I have that one. Okay, let's take a look at my uh, basket here because I brought up um, spices and sea herbs from downstairs, but I know I needed some that were up here too. So let's see, I have paprika here, oregano from the garden, cumin. I think I brought up two, but I don't think I need both of these um yeah i'm pretty sure i don't need both of those cumin garlic this is garlic powder i used to um i have made my own garlic powder by dehydrating garlic i grew before and blitzing it up but honestly garlic and onion i did not like that way they were very it's like the dehydrator because it uses heat, um, kind of cooks it a little bit. It made it very, very strong and hard to work with. I tried to adapt recipes using less and it, it just, it was crazy. What I'm going to do though in, in a week or two, I have onions I bought and garlic I still need to process from the garden because I didn't get through all of it. I'm going to try freeze drying it and making powder that way. So for now I have store-bought garlic and onion powder. Um, cayenne, I need a little bit of cayenne from my upstairs spice cabinet you got this optional cinnamon and cocoa powder I like cinnamon and cocoa powder in my chili powder seasoning and I I like the little square shaped glass containers so when I buy one like this one's from Trader Joe's I tend to just refill it from a Costco size thing which I refilled that one recently um, okay, chili powder I'm making. Onion powder is already out. Cumin is already out. 
Garlic powder I already have. Paprika is out. Oregano is out. Salt. Let's grab the salt. Um, onion flakes for the dry onion soup mix. I'm also going to make some flakes of my own when I freeze dry. Put them on beef bouillon granules. That's up here as well. Let's see. For the onion soup mix, the beef bouillon granules makes the most sense. And I know I don't have enough in here, so I have a second container here. Um, I've got the onion powder parsley from the garden here. This is my last parsley from last year's garden. It's pretty full, but that's all I got. Celery seed. That one here. Paprika is out. Pepper. I should realize, in fact, I think, I think I'm going to need more than this. I need the big container I have down here. I go through salt and pepper so fast that I keep my larger containers up here in the bottom of my pantry rather than down in the basement. Um, where was I at? Pepper. I need more parsley for that, more garlic, more onion. Salt and dill. Last thing for my basket, dill. All right, let's put this out of the way. So I now have all my seasonings, all my measuring tools, and my four recipes that I am making today. And like I said, I'm gonna start with chili powder because I need it to make my taco seasoning. So chili powder, again, I will link these below. For my big batch, I need two, two thirds of a cup of paprika. It's a lot. My one-third cut measure. And I mostly just get close. It doesn't have to be exact. And I also don't worry about rinsing these between because they, um, there's a lot of cross products and it's not like a tiny bit of residue isn't going to ruin the other recipes. I've done it before. Oregano. I need a quarter cup of my oregano. I can tell that this one was my later in the season batch of oregano because it's a little bit lighter in color. It's funny how when you grow it and you preserve it all year, you start to notice little differences. Like my regular, in the beginning it was darker and then this was like the fall. I think we'd already had a frost and it's more brown. Um, cumin, two and a half tablespoons of cumin, which I do have a half tablespoon measure, but I'm just gonna eyeball my one tablespoon. Two and a half. Hello. One, two, and round about a half. Okay. Onion powder is the next thing in here, and I need about one and a quarter tablespoons. Again. That was actually a little more than one and a quarter because I eat too much onion. It's not going to be too much, actually. Cayenne. Now, this is an optional. Um, I like my chili powder very mild, so I don't put much cayenne. If you like a spicy chili powder, just add more cayenne. Um, I put about one teaspoon in this whole batch, but the traditional amount would be closer to two and a half teaspoons, just so you know. Okay, and then, this is something I learned from a Mexican friend of mine. Tiny bit of cinnamon and a tiny bit of cocoa powder. Um, you don't really taste them. It doesn't make, things, um, doesn't make things taste like cinnamon rolls or baked goods or anything. It just adds like this depth and body to it and makes it a little more bold without being more spicy. I'm gonna put a half teaspoon of cinnamon and two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Again, you don't taste it. It just makes this deeper, bolder, fuller flavor. And you kind of just don't know where it's coming from. And now that that is all mixed, I'm just gonna grab a spoon here. 
or now that it's all in there, I'm gonna grab a spoon and mix it. This will look like a more, I don't wanna say chunky chili powder than what you might be used to because the herbs are not ground fine to match the like paprika and cumin and stuff, but it is a little larger flaked, I guess you would say, but this is how we enjoy using it. Okay, I'm gonna sit this aside, but not too far away, because I'm gonna use it to start my taco seasoning in the next bowl. So my taco seasoning starts with a third of a cup of chili powder. Here's my one third cup measure. in there and then a lot of the same spices but we're making it just a little more concentrated here so a third of a cup of chili powder a quarter cup of onion powder where'd my onion go and the beauty another beautiful thing about making your own um, large batch of mixes is that you can use more or less of it in a recipe. If I'm making taco meat, I don't have to use just one packet or, cause you know, sometimes like one packet's not enough, two packets is too many, you know, then you have an open packet sitting in your pantry. You don't have to worry about that. You can just use however much you want. Onion powder, I just did cumin. Let's see, five teaspoons of cumin. That might seem like a weird measurement, but remember I, I was just multiplying my normal, like I, I have it written down in my cookbook in the way that is, um, I can make just like one packet worth if I want, or I can make a big batch like this. So that's cumin, garlic powder, five teaspoons of that. Three, four, five, some paprika. Put it back on right. I don't know why I'm bothering to put that on because I'm going to have to use it again. Paprika, five teaspoons of that. A lot of stuff in equal amounts in this one. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. I made this recipe once. I did like a taste test thing with uh, friends at a, um, a Bible study group where I did the dip. I don't know if you know that it's like an old from the 90s dip where you just mix taco seasoning and sour cream and you used it for chips. And I did one with this taco seasoning and I did one with like a store-bought taco seasoning, uh, like a, I think it was McCormick, like a name brand, and just asked them which dip they liked better and didn't tell them what was different about it, that I made one or anything, and they, um, they liked mine better. So I've stuck with it. Let's see. We just did paprika, oregano, five teaspoons of oregano. Back over here. One, two. Good thing it's almost spring and ready to plant again because I'm going to need to plant more herbs. Five and one and a quarter teaspoons of salt. This is just your, it's your regular, um, what am I trying to say? Sea salt, pink Himalayan sea salt. Okay. Taco seasoning is ready to stir. Okay, two down, two to go. See how fast this goes when you have everything just kind of out, out and ready? Keeping these in order. Chili seasoning, taco seasoning. The taco seasoning looks a little bit lighter, so it's easier to tell anyways. Okay, onion soup. Onion soup starts with onion flakes or dried onion. If you have freeze-dried or dehydrated onion, yay for you. Use that. Um, one and a quarter cups. This is the basis of your dry onion soup mix. And um, this is, I'm gonna have to check my notes. It's about an ounce of this equals a packet of a dry onion soup mix. And I will try to, I'll, I'll measure that out after this and put that in tablespoons for you because who measures an ounce? I don't like to do that, but I do. Okay, two thirds of a cup of beef bouillon granules. I have this. Uh, two thirds of a cup. Okay, one. Some of these are clumping because I live in a humid area. Oh, I did use the, and there's like a 
half tablespoon, I'll just dump it in there. I had gotten extra, an extra container because I thought that wouldn't be enough. Um, let me break up some of these clumps. They just, they fall right apart. It's not hard. Okay, some onion powder. We're back to the onion powder again. One and a half teaspoons of onion powder. That's one teaspoon and one half a teaspoon. Okay. Um, parsley, one and a half teaspoons of parsley. Okay, one teaspoon, one half teaspoon of parsley. Okay. For celery seed, we just need three quarters of a teaspoon. Oh, that's my one from our spice cabinet. Celery seeds smell so good to me. It's just fresh. Three quarters of a teaspoon of celery seed, three quarters of a teaspoon of paprika. Notice I'm not being exact and leveling things out. It's okay. And then three quarters of a teaspoon of black pepper. This act, believe it or not, does not make things peppery. Okay, getting this one mixed up till it is nice and combined. All right, last but certainly not least in my family is ranch dressing mix. Okay, so ranch is something we go through quite a bit because not only do I use the dry powder, but I also make our own ranch. I'm pretty sure I made a video. Did I make a video? Why can't I get this lid off? Did I make a video with making ranch? If I did, I'll link it. So ranch is a quarter cup of pepper. So just so you know, what I do when I make actual ranch dressing is I, um, I mix like two tablespoons. I'll make like a half and half mix of mayonnaise and sour cream, usually about a cup each. You can make bigger or less. For that amount, I put about two tablespoons of ranch dressing, splash of lemon juice, mix it up, and then I thin it with water to the consistency I like. Um, it does get a little bit thicker as it sets because those herbs start to absorb some moisture. But um, it's, it's easy to do and it's really good. It's really good. Okay. Cup and a half of parsley. Yeah, that is parsley. Just want to make sure I didn't use up all my parsley or use the wrong herb. One and a half. Did I make, did I say that right? One and a half. Yes. Half cup. One and a half cups of parsley. Okay. Not much left. Need to get growing. Three quarters of a cup of granulated garlic. And I'm just slightly short, and I don't like to short myself on garlic, but I brought a second container up. So I will be able to top off that last quarter cup. Okay. Three quarters of a cup of onion powder as well. And this, you can change the herbs that's in it if you want. It's really... I have found that the heavy amount of parsley is really the flavor that you're getting from store-bought ranch. I do occasionally add basil because we like also like um, from the restaurant, the spaghetti factory, we like their creamy pesto dressing, which is really like, it's not really a pesto dressing. It's like a ranch with basil in it. And so sometimes I'll add basil. Um, let's see, garlic, onion, two tablespoons of salt. and two tablespoons of dill weed. Oh, one I haven't used yet. Did 
don't have much dill left either. I didn't get a full, I only got the one jar this year and it wasn't full. I did, but that's because I, I freeze dried some too. So I do have some freeze dried dill in my downstairs pantry. And that is all for the ranch dressing mix. Just want to get it pretty even though. So at this point, we are ready to put all this in storage containers. And I like to, I have a ranch one already. Just grab that. And grab my funnel here. Okay. See, I have a tiny bit left. Not really enough for a new batch of ranch. So I dump that into a container. I'll reuse this one for right now. Get all this in there. And every time I get this out to use it, I do shake it, kind of mix stuff up because the smaller particles will fall to the bottom, which is fine when you have a single serve packet, but when you are, cause it doesn't like if it's all going in, it's fine. But when you are doing a big batch and it's not all going in, you need to make sure it's more even. Okay. Ranch is down. Next up, let's see. All right. I'm going to get a quart jar for the onion soup mix and pint jars for the rest. Quart jar. Pint jars, okay. Okay. Get my onion soup mix in here. These also make a good gift, by the way. Sometimes I'll make one of these to throw in my Christmas baskets, especially if I don't have time to do a whole lot of baking because um, these come together faster. All right, Let's put that aside for now. This is my taco seasoning. And you can see, once I get these in the jars, you'll be able to see that the taco seasoning is lighter than the chili powder. Okay. And at last, chili powder. And then what I'm gonna do is get lids. Now this is where I will reuse canning lids. When you can like jellies and things, you're not supposed to reuse this part. You can reuse the rings, but you don't reuse these for canning, but I will wash and reuse them for non-canning things like storing spices, food that I keep in mason jars in the fridge, um, salad dressings, anything that goes in a jar still. Okay, so I have these three. All right, so we have, oops, I need a wide mouth for that one. All right, so this one's going to be onion soup mix. That's ready to store. You can put a moisture absorber in there if you want. Um, taco seasoning. And chili powder. Now I do sometimes make a big batch of chili powder. I'm not making taco seasoning. Because I, you know, this is a separate ingredient all its own for some things. Well, a lot of things. We use chili powder pretty frequently. So um, I'll probably have to make another one of these like next month. <laughs> but it'll have more because I won't make taco seasoning. This will last me a few months. And just like that, we have our ranch, taco seasoning, onion soup, and chili powder all ready to use without a lot of the fillers, junk, and sugar. That's in a lot of the other seasonings, which always surprises me what has sugar in the store. Um, so healthier, cleaner ingredients, and cheaper. You know how much the taco seasoning packets cost? <laughs> They amaze me, whereas these are like less than half the cost per serving. So 
If you give these a try, let me know. Also, let me know in the comments if there is some other mix that you like to make and what you put in it, because I am always loving to replace store-bought items and mixes and things with homemade ones. So I'd love to hear what you make. Let me know in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for joining me today to make mixes.